So for the tax 7, here we are told to update our command interpreter console of pi and we have to create a method create and then show destroy all and update. So the create method should create an instance of base method and save it to to JSON file and then prints the ID. If class name is missing, we print class name is missing. If class name doesn't exist, we print class name doesn't exist. So let's start with that one. So I already got ahead to import shellless module, which we'll be using for for line split. And then I've imported base model storage. Um, so we are going to to create a class called um, a class attribute called the uh, valid classes, which is going to hold a list of the valid class. We still use the use for it. Um, this uh, the method to handle empty line. If an empty line is entered. We don't do nothing. Okay, this is from our previous task. So let's go ahead and move to create. So I've already um, defined all of the methods. So we just take our time and implement them. So this create method is going to be responsible for for creating a new instance of the base model and uh, oh, and then saving it and then creating its, its ID so first thing we do is um, we are going to use <coughs> excuse me shares to split the input input argument into a list of tokens that's any arguments that is passed when we um, when we call the create command from uh, our CLI, we are going to okay, we create a variable called commands and then we use shlex the split and then we pass in the arg which is whatever argument that is passed from from to the CLI. And then what it's going to do is just to remove quotes and preserve white spaces. The next thing we do is to we are going to verify whether there are any tokens. When I say tokens, I'm referring to words that are passed. So we check if um, verify if there is any token in the command list because this this commands when we use the shellless dot split. If, if there are three arguments that are passed, the three arguments are going to be saved into a list, and that list is this command. So we will say if if length of commands is equal to zero, which means um. If the length is equal to zero, which means is is only the 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 command create that was entered, that there's no the class name was not entered. So we print class name missing. Okay. And then if there are tokens in the command list we proceed to check if the first token corresponds to a valid class name so we say elif command does <coughs> command does the the first argument after we enter create which should be the class name if the first argument is not in 
self dot valid classes that's this um, um the class attribute that we created yeah if it's not here we are going to print that the we print that the class doesn't exist and then if the class name is valid we are going to create a new instance of the base model so we say we call it new instance equal to is equal to base model and then now that we've created a new instance, we are going to call the save method of the file storage to save this new instance to the, to the storage. So we say new instance dot yes dot save. And then after saving, finally we just print the ID of the newly created instance. So we do print New instance dot id so that should do it for the create if you're if you're typing along you can go ahead and test for create i think i'll just finish all of them before start testing for them so the next one is show show is going to print the string representation of an instance based on the class name if the class name is missing we print class name missing if it doesn't exist class doesn't exist if id is missing instance id is missing if the instance of the class name doesn't exist for id we print no instance found so for a do show we know that um, do show is is going to handle the printing of the string representation of uh, specific instances based on 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 the class name and the instance id so we are going to start with the same thing we are going to use the schlex to split the impute line into a list of words or into the list of tokens we say commands equal to schlex the split then we pass in the uh, <coughs> excuse me so next thing we are going to uh, also verify whether there are any tokens in the command list because there has to be tokens for this to work so we say if the length of command is equal to zero that is if there are no tokens we are going to print class class name missing we print class name missing and then and if, if if there are tokens in the command list we proceed to check if the first token corresponds to a valid class name so we should check if commands we check if the the token that is found is in the is in the class name that's the class attribute that we created if it's not there we are going to print We print if it's not that we print class doesn't exist and then again again if the class name is valid we will check whether there are at least two tokens in the command list 
This is to ensure that the user provided both the class name and the instance ID. So we check if the length of command is at least is, is less than two. If it's less than two, it means there are there are fewer uh, 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 tokens. So we just print that the instance ID is missing because if it's less than two, it means it is only the the class name that was provided, but the the ID was not provided. So we just print. instance id missing so if both the class name and instance id are provided we proceed to fetch all objects from the storage using the storage dot all so it's creating a variable called objects and we, we fetch all the objects objects from the storage and then <clears throat> the next thing we are going to do is to construct a key we are going to construct a key in the format class name dot instance id because you know that's the way it's saved class name dot instance id so based on the provided tokens, so we say key is equal to class name dot using the string format. So we pass in the command, the first index of in the command list, which is the class name, and the second index in the command list which is the class id so the key is going to be class name dot the id so again we check if the key exists in this object dictionary that is in the storage we check if the key exists in there we say if key in objects if it exists it means that the instance is found so we just print the string representation of the instance so we print the objects and then we pass in the key so and if the key is not found if the key is not an object in the object what we do is just to print the error message no instance was found found so mm, next thing is to handle for the destroy destroy method so we know that this destroy method is is going is designed to delete an instance based on the class name and instance id well, it's going to be designed because we've not designed it yet. So, as usual, the first thing we are going to do is to use shoeless to split the ax that is coming in from the command line. So we pass on the ag. And then, again, we verify whether there are any tokens in the command list. So we say if Length of the command, okay. Length of the command list should be command. Let's command. If command list is zero. If there are no tokens, which means it is zero, so we are going to print the error message. You print. So we print 
class name class name missing so now if there are tokens in the command list we are going to check if the first token corresponds to a valid class name because we are, we are going to be doing this a lot that's the use of creating the class attributes valid classes so we check if the if the class from the command line is in self dot valid classes if it's, if it's not in there we print the error message print the mes error message class doesn't exist now assuming that the class name is valid we are going to check whether there are at least two uh, tokens in the command list like we did before we say elif if the length of command is less than two if it's less than two it means mm, that the instance id is not provided so we, we, this is done just to ensure that the user provides both the class name and the instance id so if there are fewer than two tokens, we print the error message. That the instance ID is missing. Then if both the class name and instance ID are provided and the class name is valid, So we, pro we are going to proceed to fetch all the objects from the storage using storage.org and again we save it to this variable objects so we say storage.org so again we are going to construct a key in the format of um, class name dot instance id based on the provided token so we say key is equal to class name dot id use dot format and then we pass in the class name followed by the id and then now that we've gotten the key and we've grabbed all the all the objects from the storage so we are going to check if this key exists in this objects dictionary so we say if if key in objects if if the key exists it means that the instance is found so we just proceed to delete the instance using the delete keyword so we say say delete object and we pass in the key and then after deleting the instance we go ahead and save the changes to the storage using storage dot save so if this key here we check that if the key is found if the key is found we go ahead and do and delete this so if the key is not found we just print the error message no instance found no no instance found so we are going to go ahead and create the dual method so this dual method is going to be responsible for printing the string representation of, um, of all instances so since 
since we are going to be printing all string representation of all instances, the first thing we are going to do is to first retrieve all objects from the storage. So we say objects is equal to storage dot all. You know the storage module is used to manage the store instances, manage and store instances of the objects. So the next thing we are going to do is to split, we are going to use the schlex to split the input line into a list of tokens like we've always been doing. So we say commands is equal to schlex dot split and we pass in arg, <coughs> excuse me, again. So again, as usual, we are going to verify whether there are any tokens in the command list. That is if there is any argument that is passed. So we say um, if length of commands is just equal to zero. So meaning there are no tokens. If there are no tokens, it means that the user didn't provide a class name. It didn't provide a class name. So what you're going to do since it didn't provide a class name, you're not going to print the string representation of any particular class, we are going to print the string representation of all classes because this method is supposed to print string representation of all classes or a specific class. So since um, there is no specific class name that was passed, we are going to print all. That is because the length of the command is completely equal to zero. So what we do is to, we are going to enter a loop that is going to iterate through all these objects the object dictionary so we say for key value in objects dot dot items so for each object we are going to convert the object to a string representation using the string function and then we print it out so we say print and then for each of the objects we use the string method to convert the value what we want to print out is the value and not the key so we print the value so now if the if the length of the command is not equal to zero which means there's, there's a, um, let, we are assuming that there is a class name that has been passed. So we are going to check if this, if this, um, the first token, which is assuming that is a class name, we are going to check if it's a valid class name. If it's in the um, valid class, the class attribute that we, we created earlier, if it's there. So we say elif commands zero. If it's not in serve dot valid classes, so we are going to it means it doesn't correspond. So we print the message class doesn't exist. So then, assuming that the class name is valid and provided in the valid class name is valid and provided, you are going to enter a loop that is going to iterate through all the objects in the objects dictionary, just like we did here. So we say for key value in objects dot items so we should remember that the keys in the object dictionary the keys in this object dictionary they are made up of the class name dot id so for each object we are going to extract the class name from the object key by splitting the key by the dot and then compare the token at index zero which is supposed to be the class name and we compare it to the provided class name from the command line like this. So we say after looping through the 
the objects object dictionary you say if if key dot split so we are going to split it by the dot because um, um, the key is class name dot id so we, when we split it you know that the class name is at the first in there so we say if the class name is class name of the key is is the same with the class name provided in the commands if they are the same what we are going to do is to print the, the value of this specific class that was provided so we just print the value so this correctly handles the do all methods and then finally we're going to look at the um, implement the do update so this do update will be responsible for updating an instance by adding or updating an attribute so we are going to start by using shles to split, split the input line into a list of tokens or words as usual say command is equal to shlex dot split and then we pass in the arg then we are going to verify whether there are any tokens in the command list when i say the command i'm referring to this just in case if there are any tokens in the command list so if there are no tokens means the user didn't provide the class name so we are going to print the error message class name missing so we say if length of the commands so we print print class name class name missing so again we are going to check if um if if there is a provided um, a class name which is provided we are going to check if is in the in the valid class list if it's not there we are going to print an error message so you say elif commands zero if it's not if it's not in self dot valid class name excuse me I was typing <coughs> what I was saying so <laughs> if it's not in a valid class name let me push this down So if it's not in a valid class name, we are going to print we are going to print that class doesn't exist. Class doesn't exist. So if the class name is valid, we are going to check whether there's at least one or or more token. The more token should be the instance ID in the command list. So we say elif if the length of the commands is less than two, we are just going to print we print instance ID missing instance ID missing so now if the class name is valid we are going to check no okay we've covered for class now class name is not valid and id is not valid okay 
So next thing is done. Um, if the class name and instance ID are both provided, so if they are pro both provided, we are going to first retrieve all objects from the storage using storage.all. So we say objects is equal to storage.all. Again, as usual, we are going to construct a key. that you're going to use the format method the string format and say class name dot id so now that we've gotten a key it is supposed to one for the key so now that we've gotten the 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 key we've constructed the key next thing we are going to check we're going to check whether the constructed key exists in the object dictionary this object dictionary we are going to check if it exists in it we say if if key not in if key not in objects we are going to print an error message we say no, it's supposed to be no instance found because the key is not there. So, again, if if the class name, if the class name, instance ID and object exist, we are going to check if there is at least one more token which is supposed to be the attribute name in the command list. Because what this update is doing is supposed to be updating. What we need for this to work is the class name, the ID, and then attribute name and attribute ID. So here we've confirmed that the the class name is there, the attribute ID, the the ID is there. So we are going to check if there are at least the third um. <coughs> A third argument passed in which is supposed to be the attribute name so we say elif the length of command excuse me the length of command is less than three if it's less than three it means there's no attribute name that was found so we say So we say that attribute is missing. Again, if the class name, the instance ID, and the attribute name are provided, so we are going to check whether there is at least one more token which is supposed to be the attribute value in the command list. So we say elif the length of command if it's less than four it means the attribute value was not provided so we print attribute value that the value is missing so if all the required field if all the required field information if all the required field information is provided we are going to next thing we say is if hmm? so we retrieve the object associated with the specified class name and id Let me push this down again so we say um, object which is the object that we want to update passing objects and then we pass in key to grab the particular object the key of the object so now that we've gotten the the object that we want to update 
we are going to extract the attribute name so we say attribute name is equal to commands and it should be the second one because the first index is the is the class name second one the class id third one is attribute name and also at the same time we grab we grab the the value which is the third index and the fourth in the list so next thing we are going to do is you're going to enter into a try block so we need to be aware that the attribute value this attribute value is initially a string so we first attempt to evaluate it using the evolve function so we are going to say attribute attribute value is equal to eval we call the eval function and then we pass the attribute value so what this does is to allow for attribute values like integers or booleans to be interpreted correctly so in this case you know we have integers in there so the the use of this eval is intended to convert values to their appropriate python data types including integers so if the attribute value can be evaluated as one of these or as one of the data type so eval will perform the conversion while leaving strings and and other non-evaluable val values as they are like like since um if we have like one two say one two i don't know yeah one two as a string so whatever is going to do is to convert it to to an integer it's just like saying int attribute value so that's the same thing that eval is doing but the 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 what why i'm using this ever is because this attribute value is not just integer that we are expecting we are expecting um, string integer and you know every other thing so what eva is going to do is just to convert integer to a python data type and then leave the string as they are so once we've done this we are going to enter the exception block that is if the evaluation fails and the code we are going to enter the exception block so, so just say step exception this is not advised but since we are not going to we are not intending to do anything with the exception so we just say pass then after extracting the this necessary information the attribute name and attribute value information we are going to use set attributes to add that is to update the attributes in the object so we pass in the object that we want to update followed by the attributes name and then followed by the attribute value and now once we've updated this object with the attribute name and value what we do is call the object which save so we save the object to the list of dictionaries and of course we have to create the instance of of the hbmb command class and then invoke the cmd loop method so that we can start an interactive command line interpreter loop so let's go ahead and run this So, um, first thing we are going to do is um, we check, I'm following what's up there, check my, my model, say class doesn't exist, you say show base model, instance ID missing. So, 
if I say show base model my first model say no instance is found so if I say create base model there prints it out so then if I say uh, base model it brings out all the base model and you it brings out all the base model and if I say show if I say show let me copy this show base model we have to include the ID then it shows it then if you try the destroy see his class name missing so if we say update base model passing this ID and then we say first name first name Johnson and then next thing we say show this model show this model so we see uh, that the, the uh, an attribute has been added which is first name and the value is Johnson and then if we say create base model that's another one we've created the same we say all uh, base model now we have to this one has an attribute first name with the value Johnson this one has none and then if we say destroy this model which is this one okay it's supposed to be destroy the class name followed by the ID there so if we try to show the base model again we say we try to show the one that we just base model no instance found so what is it <laughs>